Hey, I'm Nick Hawks with Gristle King and out here at one of San Diego's pretty beautiful vernal pools. These are pools that are ephemeral in nature. That means they're only here for a short while. And within these pools, this is one of the largest, you have an entire life cycle that happens in just a month, maybe two, maybe a little bit less. Some of these animals and creatures have a life cycle of just 14 days. So pretty amazing stuff here. Now, the important part is that we use helium to measure what's going on. We're using the helium Lorawan to measure how long these vernal pools last. This one behind me, while well, it looks like a really wet uh, wetland right now, it won't be here in a month or two. So. What we're using uh, helium for is to measure the water levels so that scientists can keep track of how long these things are around, how fast they go down. And while looking at external conditions like temperature, humidity, storms, all the rest of it, whether or not they fill back up, you can see behind me today, this thing might fill back up a little bit uh, and just keep track of what's going on. Typically how they do that is they'll have researchers come out here once a week, maybe a little bit more and measure with a ruler but the presentation that, uh, that I made to them and the kind of proposition that I made was, hey, let's use helium to measure these things. We'll start with the LDDS-75, which is a Dragino ultrasonic uh, water level sensor, and we'll see how that works. And really that's what we're doing right now in this kind of world of helium is seeing what works, how well it works, and how useful it is ultimately to the scientists, because really that's what we wanna have. We wanna have a network that is useful, that can be used by and used to benefit all of these pretty magnificent wetlands behind me and the rest of the natural and the built world. So that's what's going on out here in San Diego's Vernal Pools. My name is David Hogan and I'm the executive director of a small nonprofit environmental organization called the Chaparral Lands Conservancy based in San Diego County. This is the approximately 830 acre Del Mar Mesa Preserve. Um, it's a really interesting place. It's one of the last remnants of coastal mesa left anywhere in San Diego County. And it has some really fabulous ecosystems, this old growth chaparral that we're looking at here, the shrublands, uh, very little uh, old growth uh, of this community left, and these really unique uh, little isolated seasonal wetlands called vernal pools. Vernal being Latin for spring, even though we're here in the winter. Uh, the idea is that they only fill up when there's rainfall in the wet season and then dry up and there's all sorts of unique plant and animal life that are dependent on these little pools and that live nowhere else other than just the basins that you see full of water here. There's a lot of stuff that we think has probably never been documented uh, by science, uh, crustaceans and insects, other invertebrae, uh, but the plants and animals we know, there's some really special ones that are endangered. There's the San Diego fairy shrimp that's in these pools right now, the Riverside fairy shrimp that doesn't live on this particular preserve, it's, but it's elsewhere in Southern California. And then there's uh, five plants that are endangered, and those include everything from a plant that's here called the San Diego Mesa Mint. If you come out when it's in bloom in May or so, uh, you can actually smell this really strong mint smell that's wafting on the air, it grows right in the pools. There's also the San Diego button celery um, that is a member of the carrot family. So it has this root kind of like a carrot and it lives for, we don't know, decades, hundreds of years, but one single plant uh, can have uh, that root that's perennial. So it just re-sprouts from that root every year in contrast to the mesa mint, which just regrows from seed every year. The San Diego fairy shrimp that lives in the pools requires a minimum of 14 days to complete its life cycle. So it reaches maturity, they reproduce, they lay eggs, they can die then afterwards and survive as eggs through the hot, dry season. But the pools can last anywhere from just a few days to sometimes up to six months. Some people wonder about how long uh, these plants and animals can survive between ponding events. And the answer is we really don't know. There's so many different examples. Uh, you know, the seed of the San Diego Mesa Mint uh, might be here for a decade or two decades and still re-sprout. Nobody's ever studied what that duration of seed viability is. We know that those uh, San Diego button celery roots last for possibly decades uh, and just re-sprout. Uh, but if there's a 10 year drought, will it survive? We don't really know the answer to that question. Fairy shrimp, shrimp eggs are extremely resilient and they'll last for possibly decades. Um, there's a little toad out here called the Western Spadefoot Toad and their tadpoles are active in the pools right now because as soon as you get a huge rainfall event, that wakes them up. They're actually burrowed in the soil 
you come out here the first night and the second night after a rainfall and the chorus of mating toads is incredible. It sounds like they're snoring. And pretty soon you see the egg masses in the pools. Those become tadpoles when they hatch and they need a few weeks to reach maturity. So you can't, uh, they wouldn't survive in a pool that was only a 14 day pool. They need a month or so. And then those little toadlets fan out from the pool as soon as they grow legs and lose their tail and become terrestrial species instead of aquatic and just burrow back into the ground. And that's how they survive our eight or nine months of hot, dry weather in this Mediterranean climate until the next time it rains. Point of all that is we don't know how long they can survive in the ground before they get woken up and come and do their life cycle thing again. All right, so that is the Vernal Pool project, at least the start of it. This sensor here, when we placed it a week ago, was in a pool that uh, had I been standing here, I would have been almost my toes wet. And now the water level has decreased a couple inches, which is all that matters for these vernal pools. It's only a few inches of water. It's only a short amount of time that these are around, these ephemeral pools. And what we want to be able to measure is what we're measuring right now, which is a distance from this sensor right here down to the water. Uh, being able to keep track of that is something that helium is enabling, and that is a pretty rad thing to use this uh, LoRaWAN on a blockchain incentivized around the world to deploy these stations that are way off in the mountains behind me, providing coverage for this sensor right here. Another rad use case for helium to measure the natural world. Rock and roll.